rum. Rum. Do you okay. have anything in yours? Just Coke. Uh, no, I don't have any rum. I, oh. I found out. Oh, so. that's sad for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome to Stupid Movies, where we watch them so you don't have to. Correct! For this uh, this one that we're talking about, and the next one we're doing Wild Eye Releasing Week. So we're, this first one that we are doing is Return to Splatter Farm. Yeah! 2020 not rated, 71 minutes long. But it was! Ha ha! Directed by two people, so Mark Polonia and Jeff Kirkendall. This starred... Oh, 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 Jeff Kirkendall, Daniel Donahue, and Mel Heflin. And, um, I forgot what we do. Yeah, so we go to a farm where a lot of splatter happened in the 80s, apparently, which uh, we have yet to witness. What happened when we returned? Uh, so this is a group of friends who go to a farm, a splatter farm. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sequel to Splatter Farm. A group of friends go out there, and there is a killer at the farm. Is this the one that had the redneck in the bunny suit getting spanked? No. Okay. I like movies where people inherit a farm and get murdered. <laughs> All right. Well, what else do we like? The location and the setting I really like. The yeah. farm, uh, just the, it was out in the middle of nowhere, basically. And they, it just had a good vibe and a good tone to it. They did a really good job making it creepy here. Yeah, the tone of it is yeah. just... It, okay, it's really low budget in the horror. You know, obviously. The wild eye. <laughs> well, right. Who are one of the best for indie horror, you know, putting stuff out. At best, I mean, in distributing. Uh, they're, they're, <laughs> Not a quality. They're very hit or miss. <laughs> but this is shot really well, and the way they do it, it just it looks intimidating maybe even during the day the way they i don't know if it's the way they lit lit things or the way yeah. just, it reminded me of going out in the middle of the day out to an area like that out in the middle of nowhere and it just has that ominous ominous maybe ominous, ominous is the word i'm looking for ominous vibe to it where it's just like this is creepy did you go in abandoned farms during the day they're creepy i actually i like the acting for the most part yeah there were there were a couple that was like and eh, not not the greatest but for the most part the acting was really really good in this uh, especially jeff kirkendall as the killer loved him. he was great he just has this look about him or i, I laughed every time yeah. i saw him <laughs> and he has just some goofy expressions and the way he just portrayed himself <laughs> made me laugh i'm like ah but, you know, he did a good job playing the killer. Yeah. And I thought it was awesome. I really, I actually liked the soundtrack to this quite a bit. Loved it. Um, it had a little bit of punk, a little bit of rock, but it was more soft, like, subdued yeah. for the most part. It, it was perfect. It was awesome. Yeah, the, the, the score that they used really created that ominous vibe, too. Yeah. Kind of that, I don't, I, as far as to say, like, 80s style vibe in the score a little bit. If you told me that this movie came out in the 80s, yeah. I would believe you. Practical effects, the soundtrack, the way it looked. It was cleaner, obviously, because, you know, new, newer equipment than something shot in the 80s. But outside of that, this was a total 80s cheese fest. And I love that. Yeah, it, it's, it hit that nostalgic perfect. The way they did it, it just felt like that shot on video type old tool stuff. You know, back to the music, I love the end credit song, that punk song. Yes! Song. It was great. And it was an original written for the movie. Yes. Because they talked about Return to Splatter From. Return to Splatter From. I love that song. It was, it was really cool. I actually yeah. rewound and listened to it a second time. It was cool. Yeah, I, I need to find out who did that, because that was awesome. Return to Splatter Farm. Return to Splatter Farm. The practical effects and the kills were done pretty well. Granted, you know, I mean, it's low budget, but they did what they could with what they had and it looked pretty good. Yeah. None of it was like, ah, that is obviously 100% fake. You know, none of it stood out like that. I thought it was, the, the blood looked good. There's guts, intestines. Yep. Appreciated that they didn't cut away from the kills. Yeah, it was mostly all yeah. on screen. And it was, it was just, and there was a lot of it too. And I appreciate that, you know, gore fan. We love I mean, our gore. You, you better have that with a movie called Splatter Farm. Yeah. You know, you splatter. And there was splatter. And I appreciate that. And it's fast paced. It didn't it is. drag its feet at all. No. Uh, well, speaking on that note, let's move to the next section. What wasn't so good? What didn't we not like? We don't like farms. I kind of like farms. <laughs> I kind of do. They're nice and quiet and they're secluded. The pacing was good, but I do think it took a little too long to get rolling. Honestly, my biggest and really only dislike is this is completely forgettable. I I'm not saying that to be mean because I thought everyone did a great job. I was only remembering things that happened in this movie as you said them. If you asked me a week from now what the plot of this movie yeah. was, I could not tell you. 
these kind of movies, this plot, storyline, it's very cliche, generic, yeah. standard stuff. That's been done how many times? There really was nothing original here. This movie is macaroni and cheese. It's comforting. Yeah. Sometimes you need this kind of movie. And I'm going to watch this movie again because sometimes I just need this movie. Yeah. I need this thing to happen. It doesn't stand out. It's not great. You know, you're not going to a five-star restaurant and ordering mac and cheese. Right. But when you've had a rough day and you just need something to feel better, right. this is perfect for that. Yeah. I kind of feel bad saying it's forgettable as a con because it's also a pro because we need comfort yeah. movies. It's, it's, it depends on your move, uh, mood because it, it, this, is, this is a popcorn kind of flick. It's, yep. you're, you're not going to get a bunch of... Th it's just a straight-up slasher. It is what it is. There's not much to the story. It's yep. boom, boom, boom. And along with that, the acting was good, but some of the characters were pretty weak. There wasn't much to them. They were just kind of throwaway. I believe, you know, I, I would lump that in with the forgettable. They are as yeah. forgettable as the plot. Right. And, and that's the thing. You, you watch as many movies as we do in the horror genre, you're going to see the same movie about 100,000 times. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know... So we went to the farm. <laughs> You saw a pig, and you were like, I'm going to fuck that pig. And I said, before you fuck that pig, you better wrap it up. Wear a rubber, my friend. Let's wrap this section up. Would you like to go first? I'll go first. Yeah, you, you go first. Yeah. It was okay. fine. It was fine. I mean, you know, uh, I really do. This is... Uh, I think mac and cheese is such a good descriptor, I'm just going to stick with that. Worse. I mean, it's comfort food yeah. in a movie. Sometimes I just want to see fucking college kids get slaughtered. You know, absolutely, and that's what this is. And it for that, it's great, right? It's perfect for that. I honestly don't remember enough about it to give much more of a review, <laughs> except if it's, I, I had fun with it. I do remember when I got done thinking of what the score was right away. I knew right away afterwards that it's a six and a half out of eight. It's not going to make you discover anything no. new. You're not going to see anything here you haven't seen before. Yeah, but for what it is, it's just good six and a half out of eight. Nice. You can't go into this expecting something phenomenal because it's not. It's an indie movie. It's low budget. It's on wildlife releasing. You should know what you're getting into. Uh, that being said, it is. It's a comfort type movie. If you love slashers, you're probably going to find some sort of enjoyment in this. It's shot well for what it is. It looks pretty good. Acting's fine. Story's cliche, generic. But if that's what you're in the mood for, this is going to fit that bill. The gore is pretty good. The effects are great. And I love Jeff Kirkendall as a killer. He cracked me up. Sometimes I laughed because it was bad. Sometimes I laughed because it was funny. You know, but that's what you want. It's a popcorn flick. I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it. I'm going to go 7 out of 8 on this one. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah! If you like us, you like us mumbling and bumbling about this stuff, give us a like and give us a follow. Subscribe if you don't. I don't care, but tell your friends or uh, I'm going to send Jeff Kirkendall after you. Oh, yeah. He probably would, too. He probably he would. He seems like a nice guy. He does seem like yeah. a nice guy. Uh, you can head over to Facebook.com slash Stupid Movies. Instagram at Stupid Movies. At Noxcast Turner. At The Horror Punk. You can also email us at Stupid Movies at Outlook.com. Support indie horror, bitches! Support indie horror. We don't say that often. I know. Though. I know. Send us pictures of you supporting indie horror. Do it! With your dick. <laughs> So kind of on the scale of indie, you've got like Wild Eye, and you've got a bunch of other companies. You've got Troma, you've got a bunch of other companies, and you've got Wild Eye. Yes, it's on both yeah, ends well, of the I was, scale. I was going to say it's a revolving <laughs> scale yeah, when it comes to well, these.